Jamison Williams had to go and stir up the hornet's nest. I wasn't going to talk about this subject. I wasn't going to mention it in videos or anything. Why? Because the Detroit Lions signing Lamar Jackson just doesn't make any sense from a Lions perspective. They have Jared Goff. Brad Holmes talked about glowingly a Jared Goff. They talk about getting a QB2 or a developmental quarterback. Lions signing Lamar Jackson after him getting the exclusive franchise tag just really didn't make any sense to make a video. But then Jamison Williams had to like a tweet. J-Mo, oh, 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 J-Mo, oh, no. So we're going to talk about that tweet, what it means for him, and is this becoming a problem with Jamison Williams? We're going to talk about the latest Detroit Lions trade rumors. Another one popped up. Is it legit? Is it BS? Give you my thoughts. Two more quarterbacks popped up for free agency targets for quarterback two as a backup role. We'll talk about those quarterbacks. Are they good fits or are they not? And PFF dropped six contracts for Lions free agents. Are they good contracts? Is it something the Lions could potentially give them? Can they afford it or is it outlandish? I loved that one because it will give us an idea of what Brad Holmes may have to deal with. But let's go ahead and start with the Jamison Williams tweet. Jamison Williams had to like this tweet that the Lions would be giving up number 18 late first round pick next year to acquire Lamar Jackson. They have the flex cap flexibility to give him five 250 guaranteed contract with a high year one cap. Go make Lamar best quarterback in the NFC. That's what I did here. Jamison Williams liked the tweet. He did. I went and checked his Twitter. It's 100%. He liked this tweet. Rut row. I got to ask you this. Give me a one-word reaction to Jamison Williams liking this tweet. Just a one-word reaction. It's going to be the pinned comment for this video. I am really interested to read these comments. This is going to be fun. Let's talk about the implications for him liking this tweet. First off, Brad Holmes already stated that Jamison Williams need to be held to account for his play in the field. Literally, this is what he said. Obviously, he has to hold his part and make sure he's doing everything he needs to do. And you don't really expect that to come out of his mouth unless there's a little bit of problems. Now, when he said this, Brad Holmes, I didn't make a video on it. I'm like, yeah, so what? Everyone needs to be held to account. Everybody needs to do what they're doing. Year one, hell, Dan Campbell said, Jared Goff needs to step up. This is just what they do. But after liking the tweet, rut row, what in the hell? Jamison Williams? I don't know. It, it's going to stir up the pot because... Does this make it a problem for Jared Goff? First off, I don't think Jared Goff gives a damn what people think about him. I truly do believe he's one of those guys that doesn't care. He really, he, he's got that that to him. I mean, Michael Brocker said about the Matthew Stafford thing, didn't work here. About, he, he talking about how Matthew Stafford is, is an upgrade. It, I don't think it bothers him. With that said, Jameson Williams, man, that's your quarterback right now, Jared Goff. The odds of Lamar Jackson coming here is extremely unlikely. So you kind of threw a monkey wrench. And to me, it's going to make the fan base go absolutely ape-s. When you talk about Lamar Jackson, it is the kiss, kiss of death. If you talk about another quarterback, even as a backup role, it's the kiss of death. You could talk about a seventh-round quarterback or it's the kiss of death around here. So when you met, mention the word Lamar and Jackson and Lions, it's really going to stir up the pot. Absolutely no doubt about it. Personally, I don't care. I think everyone has the right to have their opinion on anything. I It doesn't bother me if people like it or not or they dream about it or not. I don't really care. But 
is definitely going to do a little bit of an uproar here because of this. It is. And I'm going to tell you why it's not going to happen, Lamar Jackson coming to the Detroit Lions. The cap killer. He's wanting guaranteed money. He's going to demand a lot because why? He's much better than Daniel Jones. He's better than Derek Carr. And he's 26 years old. He's going to get paid. I don't know how much he's going to get paid, but it's going to be quite a bit of money. And the Lions aren't in the business right now of doing that. Jared Goff's been endorsed by Brad Holmes and Dan Campbell. Yeah, they'll get a quarterback in free agency to back him up. Yeah, they'll probably get a developmental guy. But they have fully on board with Jared Goff this year. And with we seen that all these teams came out like 10 minutes after Lamar Jackson got tagged. We're not interested. We're not interested. We're not interested. I have a feeling Brad Holmes and Dan Campbell already knew he was going to be hitting the market. They're just not interested. They're not. Lions draft the players they want. They literally draft the players they want to get. They're not big into making major free agency splash moves. They're not big into making major trades. They're the draft the players. That's how we build. I mean, that that's it. And look, I'm not hating at all. Lamar Jackson's great. I'm just telling you, just seems extremely unlikely this to occur. But I got to ask a question for you. Do you believe Jameson Williams made a mistake liking this tweet? Do you think it's a little bit immature? Why for yes and for no? I'm going to tell you personally, I don't care because I allow anybody to have their opinion. But I know it's going to cause drama in the fan base. So I think he should have known that. I mean, that's, especially after what Brad Holmes said. But let me know your thoughts. Let's go ahead and talk about the latest Detroit Lions trade rumor. Seeing this pop up on multiple sites. I don't know why they keep doing this here, but the latest one is the Detroit Lions tr- for, should trade for Allen Robinson quarterback sorry, wide receiver for the Los Angeles Rams. Well, last year, they had connection there with the Lions and Allen Robinson. They didn't do that. They went and got DJ Chark. Allen Robinson gets a big old deal over there for the Rams. He's 6'2". Look, he, he would be that DJ Chark role, right? But he's 29 years old, okay? He's 29. And... When you look at his salary right now, this is what you'd be trading for. His cap hit, you, obviously you can adjust it, right? But his base salary is $10 million. Why would you trade for a wide receiver where the finances is really expensive? His pr- production wasn't there. That's what he did last year. 33 receptions, butt cheeks. 339 yards, butt cheeks. Three touchdowns, butt cheeks. 10.3 average. That's what he did. Why, when a player from the Rams gets mentioned for a trade, it always goes to the Detroit Lions. There's actually no connection with Brad Holmes and Allen Robinson. He was a bear before he was a Ram. Why can't we allow teams to... Sh- just shoot themselves in the foot with these contracts. Why do we have to pick it up? Why do we got to be the trade bait for these terrible contracts? You're seeing all these teams release players. You're seeing all these teams, oh, oh we can't afford it. We got to trade the players. We've been fiscally responsible. Let these teams take the gun and pop themselves in the foot. Let's not be involved in that. If they want to make stupid errors, Let them make stupid errors. But we don't need to help any other team out, specifically the Rams, with their going all in and saying F the picks. That's my thought process here. And now the rumor around the Jalen Ramsey trade. So if you're still on the Jalen Ramsey bandwagon, and look, I I get it. But the rumor here for Jalen Ramsey, they would trade him for a round one and round two pick. Round one, round two. There is no freaking way the Detroit Lions are going to give up pick 18 
and say pick 48 or 55 for Jalen Ramsey. That's absolutely ludicrous. Yes, he is definitely a top five cornerback, but 17 million giving up two giant picks for Jalen Ramsey, who's older? No. I'm not going to do that. That's absolutely nutcase. Put in perspective here. They want a first and a second for Jalen Ramsey. Hell, if you sign Lamar Jackson, that's just two firsts. And one is a premium position at 26, and the other one's older. Not a premium position. So it's absolutely ludicrous. I would not trade for Jalen Ramsey. And I believe that Dan Campbell and Brad Holmes have brains, and they're not going to be doing that for that type of price. Just, that's way too much. First and a second round pick, absolutely not. So, two more quarterbacks, potential targets for the Lions to get a quarterback to in free agency. That popped up. It was M Live as well as Free, as well as everywhere else. Teddy Bridgewater potentially could be one. That was Dave Briquette. Could be an option for the Detroit Lions. I don't think it's going to cost a lot of money. At all, he could be an option as a backup guy. And Jacoby Brissett's popped up as a quarterback to potentially back up Jared Goff. In all honesty, I would be fine with pretty much any one of these guys. I just want somebody that's had starting experience. I don't need a the biggest name in the world, right? I don't need that. But I'm not looking for David Blau and Tim Boyles. You know, Jacoby Brissett, Teddy Bridgewater... Hell, Carson Wentz, you can go, I love Cooper Rush, he's my number one guy, I'd get in free agency, Mike White, Taylor Heineke, there's a ton of of quarterback twos on the market, I don't think you're going to have to pay a whole lot to get a player who's actually started before. Let's go ahead and get into the contracts that PFF laid out for six Lions players here. Now, they gave a contract out or what it would be for DJ Chark here. It'd be a three-year, $35 million contract at $23.5 million guaranteed. I actually think that is reasonable. If the Lions could get that done, I would like it. You put him on the outside, it's a reasonable contract for what he did. That's something maybe the Lions can get done for sure. I think, man, it's uh, that's honestly probably right. It really is. Next is Deshaun Elliott there. It has PFF rank is, is 113, and they're given a two-year $6.5 million, $3.5 million guaranteed. If the Lions were to do that, I'd be fine with that as well. Uh, I don't know if they're going to bring him back because of the Josh Johnson rooms, the rumors, but I wouldn't mind it. And then you hear you have Jamal Williams. Their projection is two years, $9 million, $5 million guaranteed. Again, that's perfectly fine done contract. I would bring Jamal back on that. Alex Anzalone, two years, seven, 4.25 million guaranteed. The contract's not bad. Will they bring him back? I don't know, but it's reasonable. Then you have here, Mike Hughes has a one year, two million, one million guaranteed. Backup role, I don't think that's a problem. And then Isaiah Bugs here is two years, four million. I think that's absolutely reasonable. All honesty here, they're not bad contracts. I would be fine with the Lions going that route and getting these players back. We'll see what happens, but the reasonable contract. It's not out of the realm of craziness, if you ask me. Folks, we got videos dropping every single day tomorrow. One Pride Podcast on my channel live, and we're going to have fun, folks. We got a mock draft coming up on Friday, Saturday. Mailbag video. Monday free agency. Better hit that notification bell because as soon as things happen, I'm dropping that video. That's what's going on here, folks, because we are getting after it on my channel. Uh, With that said, adios.